Hey guys, OG Albine here, and I know it's been a little bit since I uploaded a PMU video. I'm a, a fair bit behind right now. I've been uh, just absolutely slammed with life lately. I recently got a new job. School's been absolutely insane, so I just kind of fell behind on this league, being that it's not upload required, but I did want to obviously finish out the season, get you guys the battles that I, uh, you know, promised to get to you. So we're going to be doing a little bit of a movie today. We're going to be covering my week seven through round one of playoff games. Uh, week nine, we got a forfeit win, so we won't have an upload from there, I mean, a battle for there, but we'll have week seven, eight, ten, and round one. So four battles in one video. I'm not going to do big team builders just because, um, again, it's going to be a long video as is. What I'll do is I'll definitely leave uh you know poga pace in the description below um you know of the teams that we had to bring in stuff like that just so you guys can look into it if you want i'll briefly touch on the team before we jump in um but yeah with that being said uh if you guys enjoy this video be sure to drop a like if you're new here be sure to drop a sub as well i would really appreciate it we are uh less than 10 subs away from actually getting 500 which is halfway to monetization which is absolutely amazing and i again would really appreciate it if you wanted to support us on that venture but uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into it. Our first game is going to be against Alolan Jose. Very cool dude. I believe he took over for someone. I don't remember who it was for, but he took over for someone. So big shout out to him for that. Um, and it was a very tough matchup. I remember this matchup specifically. Um, you can see Sand is very scary for us to deal with potentially, uh, especially just uh, because it kind of rips through a lot of our team. Uh, we do have things like Slowbro that uh, could potentially be okay, but they get overwhelmed. We're playing Thundi Eye again. If you remember our game versus Slick earlier in the season, uh, before he dropped that, Thundi Eye was a very big issue for our team, and it continues to be a very big issue for our team. So we got to be careful about that. Um, Cobalion, we're facing that again. I believe Brody had that earlier in the season. So lots of rematches we're facing, um, and I have a lot of trouble breaking this team. I have a lot of trouble breaking the core of Slow King plus Tang Growth. They realistically can check most of my team on their own uh, with just fat, annoying assault vest sets. So we're going to have to be very, uh, very particular about that. And then another threat that I didn't even have to play because he didn't bring it, but it definitely, uh, you know, made a big in difference in prep is going to be that um, was going to be Mega Absol. Mega Absol ripped through my team, which is knock off Sucker Punch and play rough. Um, even maybe not Sucker Punch, even just, uh, I mean, knock off Sucker Punch, play rough, and then like an Iron Tail for a forge or something like that. So. Very scary. Um, as for the team we brought, we brought a sub-3 tech Mega Alakazam to potentially play around that, uh, what do you call it, Mega Absol, but as well as regen pivots from things like AV, Tangrowth, and Slowbro to potentially break through. We're modest with Psychic, Shadow Ball, Focus Blast, and Substitute. Uh, we have a Slowbro, we're physically defensive Pulver Bear with Psychic, Flamethrower, Toxic, and Slack Off. Very good defensive check to a lot of different annoying things on our opponent's team. Uh, we are a mixed autonomized Dragonium Z Kamo'o with Bulletproof. We have Close Combat, Fun Throw, Outrage, and Autonomize. Again, I'm not going to go over EVs, but Pokeface will be in the description below. Uh, and then we have a physically defensive Baviri Barrier Floor just with Moonblast, Wish Protect, and Calm Mind. Can go absolutely pretty crazy in this game, especially if we can chip down um, and get rid of the extra Drill. We really just think we can totally win with our uh, our Floor just, which is obviously really, really nice. Baviri helps us not only with the Cobalion, but the potential uh, Mega Absol that ends up not coming. Then we have a Black Sludge Nihi with Power Jump, Hidden Power Fire, Stealth Rock, and Toxic Spikes. My opponent didn't have a crowd of poison either that, or they didn't have a good one. Don't remember exactly, but one of the two definitely thought it was important. And then we have a uh, pretty bulky three attacks rest shaman with Seed Flare, Earth Power, and Air Slash. Um, just a very good overall pivot to a lot of this team. Very annoying to kill. And then with uh, National Hero plus Rest, we should be able to, you know, pretty well keep ourselves healthy, even if Sand comes nerfing our Synthesis. Um, and it's just a little bit better than Leafs in this matchup, in my opinion. And uh, yeah, we should be able to break through the team. So let's go ahead and jump in. I am going to lead off with Nihi in this particular matchup, just because if I can get up my T-Spike, it's very, very annoying for my opponent to uh, potentially, you know, try and combat that and, uh, you know, deal with that. We can really chip down that regen core over time with Nihi. Um, and that really helps out things like Zam, um, especially in ripping through this team. Another great thing about Zam that I forgot to mention is going to be its Trace, obviously allowing us to uh, Trace a Sand Rush from the Excavation and be a good revenge killer to that. So we're going to see a Cobalion lead. We're just going to exchange rocks these two turns. I didn't expect him realistically to go for an Iron Head turn one. I know it's a bit of a risky play, but I knew I lived one regardless because uh, we're pretty fat on this Nihi. And uh, I really didn't expect him to do so when we, we have a, uh, a slow roll in the back. So this next turn, though, however, I am going to pivot out into slow bro. Uh, just trying to get off a little bit of damage uh, on this thing if it wants to end up going for the Iron Head this turn because he saw that I ended up staying in. Uh, as he does end up going for the Iron Head. Unfortunately, we're not Helmet this week. Helmet would have been absolutely amazing for this, but we are Culver instead, so a little bit annoying. Not the biggest deal in the world. Is we're going to see a Volt Switch, so we know it's Stealth Rock, Iron Head, and Volt Switch. Um, we're not AV on this slow roll, obviously, so you saw even a not invested Cobalia is doing a pretty big chunk, so we got to be careful with our slow roll make sure we're keeping it healthy. As we're going to see a Gigalith come in, and this was very, very interesting to me, as it's going to get poisoned 
um, as I believe we go for a flamethrower. Uh, yeah, I did go for a flamethrower. Um, as you're gonna see this thing come in, it's not gonna take very much damage. We can't really scald burn it now, so like it makes sense in that sense, but like realistically, Giggles shouldn't be able to beat me 1v1. Unless he has something a little crazy, maybe he's like really offensive boom, um, with a good amount of speed to make sure he outspeeds my bro, or maybe he's like, uh, you know, some kind of like max adamant. Regardless, I'm gonna scout because I'm pretty low anyways, and I should probably be slower than this thing if we invest at all. So I'm gonna pivot out into my shaman just to see exactly who he wants to go for. As he ends up going for a block, and this is a really cool tech, um, this shows me that he's for sure like some kind of block toxic rest set. Uh, cause that in theory should be slow bro, just cause of how fat, uh, Gigalith is on this pedest side when it comes to, um, uh, it getting that sand boost and things like that. So we're going to get into our shaman, thankfully, and at least scout that, but that was definitely a cool bring on Jose's part. It's going to take a little bit more poison. We also know that it's lefties, which is good to know for the extra drill. It's not going to be, uh, you know, smooth rock or anything like that. As he is going to pivot out into the thunderous incarnate. And they do just go for a pretty free seed flare. There's not a lot of switches to shaman. Shaman is honestly kind of rips this team's defensive core pretty darn well as it's gonna come in it's gonna take that seed flare and then it's gonna get hit by the sandstorm it also shows it's faster than us now i expected it to be but you know just good information i know always smart to keep those things in mind as we uh as we uh what do you call it go throughout the game uh just to kind of keep in mind speed tiers and stuff but uh we're gonna see the extra drill double in as i do end up pivoting out i believe into my Nihilego, lego just because it's my best for that uh check to that thunderous at this point in time so good double on my opponent's part I'm gonna get a little bit of uh, black sludge recovery back, but there's no way I can really stay in. I don't break this thing, and uh, I don't. Uh, I definitely don't take a hit. That's for sure. So I'm gonna make the pivot back out into my uh, my shaman as he does end up going for a rapid spin. This is unfortunate because I wanted to poison the slow king and the tango, but I can still potentially get up that T spike a little bit later on and still be in a pretty good spot at the end of the day. So it's not the biggest deal in the world um, when you look at things. Uh, at the end of the day. So we're gonna see this extra drill pivot out into the Tangrowth. I believe I just throw off yet another Seed Flare because if that Thunder is supposed to come in, it's potentially in 2k range, especially if I'm able to get a drop as this Tangrowth is gonna come in and it is going to get a special defense drop. And this is awesome because we are packing Air Slash, which means we will be able to 2k this thing, even if it is AV, I believe, uh, with a minus two Air Slash, which is awesome. And so I'm gonna go for it <laughs> and I'm gonna miss, which is, Really unfortunate because yes, he could have pivoted out, saved his tank growth for sure, but it didn't allow me to keep on the offensive pressure that I really wanted in this instance because he knocked off. He didn't sludge bomb or anything like that. So we're gonna air slash. He's gonna be able to sludge bomb there. You see, that's definitely a two hit KO. So this is a bit unfortunate because it's also gonna chip me down very low, bring me down around, uh, you know, a good 40% as my opponent is going to pivot out of the tank growth out into their, um, out into their thunderous as I am gonna go for a rest. Now, it's a bit unfortunate that I'm forced to rest this early, kind of show that, but. Not the biggest deal in the world, and at the end of the day, it is Pokemon, so we can't get super, super upset with, uh, you know, things like that. And again, once I rest up, I'll be able to pivot out, and then my natural cure will activate, and I'll be able to, uh, you know, be able to wake up again and all that stuff. So, I'll make the pivot out to Nihi again, just, uh, just to be a little reckless, as we're gonna see, I believe this thing goes for a bulk up. And, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I for sure underprepared for bulk up thunders. This is a great bring by my opponent, no, no shade in the sense of, like, this is a bad bring, no. Awesome bring. I was so petrified of like a nasty plot thundy, so petrified of a nasty plot thundy. I did not build for um, what do you call it? In the slightest, um, bulk up in the slightest. So I'm gonna pivot out here as my opponent makes a double onto Cabalion, and this kind of planted a seed in my head, making me think that he was um actually going to be a what do you call it set? Like a like an adamant, like very very slow or like slower than knee potentially kind of set. And uh, that's going to come into play later, as you're going to see, because the fact that he switched out, I was like, oh, crap, he has to claim a KO. I was trying to stack my floor, just, um, I'm going to make the pivot out into Flourish now. I'm going to protect, scout, and see what he wants to go for, and then pivot out into Slow Bro, but my opponent's going to make a good blend. He's going to go for a Volt Switch, which is a little bit unfortunate, but again, not the end of the world. Um, we can still regen that damage off, though with the rocks and potential sand and all that shenanigans, um, it's going to be a little bit more difficult for us. So we're going to see this Thunders come right back out. I believe I am going to pivot out. Um, just in case and you know try and save this thing a little bit for later i'm gonna go into my kamo'o as this is single for a bulk up again it just goes for a raw thunder punch which is definitely good to know it's gonna thunder punch here it's not gonna get the para which is very nice um and this thing we've just seen bulk up we see a fly right here so he raw flew in my face and i'm gonna autonomize and me autonomizing here sucks because now i gotta pivot out because before i was slower so i didn't attack it first now i'm gonna be faster which means he's gonna get the fly off probably kill me and even if he doesn't kill me i won't get a hit off 
So um, definitely not optimal. I want to save my Kamo'o for a little bit later because I do think it can win the game if I can find another opportunity to get up said Autonomize. And I'm going to make a pivot out of Nihi right here. Uh, we're going to take this fly. <laughs> Gotta take a shit ton of damage. We are going to get crit. Doesn't really matter though. I think we died to Thunder Punch afterwards anyways. Um, so not the biggest deal in the world. And then he's going to go for a Thunder Punch and kill me. So he does outspeed me. Um, earlier in the game, I remember I talked to him after. He said that if I was like a really, really, really fat Nihi, I didn't, he didn't kill me with Thunder Punch from the range I was at, a plus one, which... I thought that was crazy. I could have sworn Nihi just drops to a plus one Thunder Punch. But regardless, not that big of a deal. We're going to lose Nihi. Definitely unfortunate um, because that means no T-Spite. And that means we are going to have an absolute awful time trying to break through this Slow King and Tangrowth core. And it's going to kind of be a slow struggle in uh, knocking one of these suckers out. As we are going to trace, we're going to trace Regen, which is also another really awesome option of this. When you play Zam against, you know, Regen spamming teams and stuff like that, you could potentially, you know, uh, take advantage of that ability for yourself. As I am going to Shadow Ball, I'm not going to get a drop here, unfortunately. We're going to see this thing is very, very bulky. I'm going to go ahead and sub up just in case and see if he wants to pip it out, if he wants to slack off in case he's just like max for death or something like that and not assault us. Uh, but it just let me scout and, you know, kind of see damage a little bit. As uh, the substitute's gonna fade, not that big of a deal too if I sub because uh, as I pivot out, I'll get all that health back just with regen, obviously being that we trace that. So pretty cool stuff. As we are going to see um, the x will come in and I'm gonna Shadow Ball be able to do a good chunk of damage. And right here, in my head, I'm thinking I'm fine. I just picked this off um, with a Focus Blast. He's actually gonna reveal to be Scarf uh, and he's gonna knock me out. Now in the game, in my head, I was like, was he really Scarf Sand Rush to deal with my Zam? Um, no, he was actually Scarf Sand Force because he didn't want to give my Zam the boost, but he realized that, you know, Excadrill could kind of push through its checks and counters on its own with Sand Force boosted Earthquake. So definitely a smart bring by him. Again, I think his prep just blew me out of the water this game. Um, I didn't build as, you know, great as I typically do pride myself on doing, and I uh, was kind of punished for it, which is definitely very unfortunate. As my Shaman's gonna throw off a Seed Flare. We're kind of running out of Seed Flare PP at this point, which also not good at all but um you know we'll be able to we'll be able to deal hopefully um and you know be able to go from there as we're gonna see the slow king come in as a pivot on my earth power right here um uh, and this is fine shaman's kind of doing its job in the sense that it, it's trying to break down this regen core with rest plus its three coverage moves because i'm gonna see flare right here i believe the slow king is just going to um dragon tail me out so yeah it is definitely av as well because it's dragon tail too to not get you know like completely set up on and smashed by cm zam which again definitely makes sense on his end um so point stone the uh, point stones are going to dig into floor just um i believe he is going to just withdraw as i do just throw off what a moon blast right here i'm pretty sure i just throw off a moon blast right here yeah so we are going to throw off a moon blast uh we're going to be able to it kill this cobalion and i kind of need to uh get rid of this thing because uh with volt switches and shenanigans and like that we're kind of boned against this thing. So I'm going to protect, scout and see what I want to go for. Rock's already up. I don't think it's set up uh, with, what do you call it? Iron Head, what? Iron Head, Volt Switch, Stealth Rock, Swords Dance. Doesn't make too much sense. As he is going to go ahead and Iron Head this time. I'm going to pop my Babiri. Not that big of a deal, because if I can heal up later, I'm in a pretty good spot to win with this thing if I get rid of the extra drill. So definitely really nice in that sense. As I am going to get flinched, but um, Jose was going off. He said, no, nah, I don't want to win that way. And I uh, actually ended up setting up a second layer Stealth Rocks. Um, and is going to let me KO the Cobalion. I really appreciate that. Um, he definitely didn't need to. I was definitely a little upset about the uh, the flinch, not going to lie. But if you were to attack me afterwards, I wouldn't blame him in the slightest. You know what I mean? Uh, it just, you know, kind of how things go. As he is going to go into the extra drill and then make a double out into the Slow King right here, I believe. As I am going to protect, I protected because it allowed me to scout and see what the extra drill wanted to go for, if that makes any sense. But I guess it doesn't really matter too much because he's... It's allowing him to like really regen pivot up his slow king and that's no bueno. That's definitely not a good thing for us as I am going to go ahead and just wish. I believe he is going to just withdraw right back out into the uh, into the tang growth. I'm uh, getting a little bit of regen health on that thing back, which is definitely annoying as well. I'm going to protect get back up to uh, just about full and uh, you know, be able to go from there. So he's going to pivot out yet again using regen to the best of its abilities. Go back out into the extra drill. I wish I moon blasted this turn, but I believe I went for a call of mine. I'm going to go ahead and protect. Maybe he wants to pivot out again. Who knows? Um, and then I'll be in a, a really good spot, in all honesty. But uh, we're going to call mine here as he is going to, I believe, just go for an iron head as I protect. Because, uh, again, why not scout? We know he's scarf at this point. It's confirmed scarf, so I'm not really risking anything in going for said protect. 
and uh, you know, I'm able to put myself in a potential good position afterwards. But he's gonna iron him. I uh, I try to get a little over aggressive and catch him doubling. Um, did not work. Um, at this point, I'm trying to get uh, get back in this game in some way, shape, and form. It's just it's not working out great for your hero, unfortunately. We're gonna get a special attack drop, which matters. Um, absolutely zero. I'm gonna sack off my forges, and uh, I'm not gonna lie to you, game guys. Uh, this game is essentially over. It's again a slow struggle for me in this matchup to try and uh, you know call something back. I am able to get into my Komoto here, and maybe Komoto can break through if I can call some regen pivots and stuff like that. So I figured this was my best opportunity, though. I know that Iron Head does not kill me. It can flinch me, and that would suck. But um, it can't kill me. So I am gonna autonomize up. Slow Kings is gonna come in. And this is a big play. I really, really contemplate just going for a regular attack, um, expecting him to scout for the Z move, which he does end up scouting for the Z move. So great, uh, you know, good play on Jose's part, knowing that he dies to a physical Z move from this range. As uh, I am just gonna go ahead and pop my Z outrage, uh, trying to KO the Slow King. Because if I clear KO the Slow King, I think I can realistically kind of, you know, win the game uh, from there. But unfortunately, he gets me there. Um, I got a little too overzealous, so I was a little bit frustrated with my prep and play so far up to this point. So I really wanted to, uh, you know, try and uh, try and claw something back right here. As I am gonna pop off the devastating Drake, and it's gonna do a lot to this, uh, to this what do you call it? This Gigalith right here, but um, it's not going to, uh, you know, be able to KO that slow king from here. And I can't really lock outrage at this point either. So good scout play by Jose. Just doesn't really work out for us on our end. As we're gonna see this Gigalith. Um, died of the poison from the toxic spike we set earlier. So big Nihi uh, KO there, right there. Uh, but he's going to be able to go back out and do a slow king. It's at full at this point. And uh, this Pokemon's a little, it was just in the red like two minutes ago. You guys remember that? It never even once clicked to slack off. But a uh, bit unfortunate. I'm going to say my Kamo again. It's my literal only way of winning this game at this point. So I have to. Um, as he is going to go for a Psy Shock. Definitely annoying, but not the biggest deal in the world. Uh, we're gonna get buffed by the sandstorm as is he which is definitely uh you know good to know uh again i don't know if it's a speed tie i forget if i put any speed in my slow bro i guess i can check right here i do slack off i didn't so this was a speed tie unless he was minus speed um which i feel like he might have been because i think he loses a lot of speed touch right here so we're gonna see a shadow ball pop it's gonna do a decent chunk to me there uh and with the sandstorm it's very very uh much so with two hit ko so i'm gonna have to kind of stall out the sandstorm i really need to get a toxic off on this thing um and you know kind of wear it down from there uh, i'm gonna go into my shaman here and the only issue with shaman while it does beat this thing 1v1 for sure i'm running out of seed flares and running out of seed flares is not good and another thing we have to kind of keep in mind is i also just raw lose to the thunderous if it comes in at all for free um and that's not good that's not good at all. I really don't have anything to beat Thunderous at this point as he is going to go hard into it right here. Um, I believe, do I rest? I rest here. So he catches me on a rest turn. Probably should have seed flared. I probably should have seed flared because I believe it would have 2 it KO'd right there. Um, especially with the potential sand. I could potentially rest up later on the slow bro. I mean, uh, the slow king. So definitely not my best play. Or not sand ended. But, you know, maybe if we got a drop, we could have 2 it KO'd. Stop it from setting up a bunch. Um, but this is essentially going to, you know, spell the end for, uh, for your hero here in week number seven. As I realistically can't beat this Pokemon anymore. Especially with the bulk up. I have to rely on a fly miss. That's, that's it. I gotta rely on Fly Miss. Um, he's gonna go for a Thunder Punch here. I could have pivoted Kamo maybe and then like forced him to fly afterwards, kept my Slowbro around. Uh, Cause Slowbro could also do very well in this matchup, but and it's just not in the cards at this point. I'm gonna go into Kamo the last ditch effort to try and potentially win this game. Uh, but he is going to reveal that he is Flyanium Z, and he's just saving it for the end game, which is completely fair as well. Definitely makes a lot of sense. So. Unfortunately, we are going to lose this game to this Thunderous. There just isn't much I can do at the end of the day. This is a great set by Jose. It was really good against my team, and I underprepared for it. And that just, you know, is how it is sometimes. Just, you underprepare for a certain thing, and uh, it, it, it's tough to recover from it afterwards. So Kamo is going to get absolutely nuked, demolished. That killed like 18 Kamo's. Um, I believe we are also minus defense in this game. No, we are minus to put death. Okay. Uh, so we're gonna go down there and then Shaman's gonna come in even if it does dodge or fly I mean, there's not much for Shaman at this point. Maybe if it dodges a bunch of hits You can potentially win. We're gonna see a Thunder Punch pop. I'm gonna go for an Air Slash Um, don't know why I went for an Air Slash. Probably should have gone for a Seed Flare Uh, I think I went for an Air Slash in case he was for some reason slower. I mean, I crit that one So like, if I crit the, uh, what do you call it instead? Would have been in a great spot, but not the biggest deal in the world. We're gonna go for a Seed Flare there because he misses 
Uh, as I missed, then he's gonna go for fly, he's gonna hit, so it doesn't really matter at the end of the day, because Sea Flare wouldn't have killed even with the credit, I don't think. Um, but yeah, GG's Jose. He definitely played uh, much better than we did that game. He prepared very well, and we're going to drop a game. But, you know, season's definitely not over. I believe this is, what, our third loss of the season. So as long as we play well the rest of the, you know, the rest of the run, we should be fine to hopefully sneak into playoffs and make a run for the championship. So I'll be right back with uh, week one. All right, next up, we're against my good buddy, Ant, ITZ with Tiva the GOAT um himself and we really need to win um we really really had a tough loss in that game against jose and we really kind of need to win out for me to feel comfortable um we i believe we have room to lose one more game six and four will make playoffs guaranteed five and five is dependent on differential seven and three definitely does and i want to go seven and three i don't like having records that um personally it just you know get a little bit frustrated if that ends up happening so so we're playing ant here very scary team he has a z zero aura you see the Victini, Conk, Mega Sharpedo, but it's first turn Mega, which is something to keep in mind. It is always first turn Mega, so it's not as scary of a Mega Sharpedo as it could be. Uh, we have a Dreepan, and we have a Jellison. He had lots of th other threats on his team, too. I believe he has a Latias as well. Um, so lots of scary, scary stuff. I can quickly go over the team I brought. I'm um, not going to go super in-depth. Again, you can look at EVs in the description below. We have a Physically Defensive Shaman with Seed Flare, Synthesis, Lead Sheet, and Earth Power. It does really well in this matchup. Uh, really good Zero Aura check. Uh, but it is a potential Z set, so we guys be careful of, like, you know, Fire Indium Z with a uh, Fire Punch. Doesn't get Blaze Gate this gen, but it does get Fire Punch. So definitely really nice. We have a Barrier, three, uh, Barrier Dazzling Game Recover, Psychic Mega Alakazam. Another great win con. Uh, if we can get the Barrier up, we can chip down the Drapion. Uh, it can honestly just go absolutely crazy against this team. Now, Victini is an issue, uh, especially if it's special Victini, actually, because we can deal with potentially uh, a V Create one because we can Barrier and then Barrier. And then be in a decent spot um, to, you know, recover all that, drop its spadef and stuff like that. Special kind of rips through us and we don't have coverage for it. So uh, that's realistically the only thing stopping our Alakazam from winning this game. Uh, I almost went in power ground, but I think there's something else that Dazzling Gleam hit. Oh, it was the, it was the Mega Sharpedo. Uh, yeah, I wanted to, I wanted to Oko it because it's scary. Be dark, something scary like that as well, uh, because we have a slow bro. Uh, and then we have a Autonomized 3 Attacks. Komo'o with Dragonium Z. Um, fully special, Clang Skills, Focus Blast, Flash Cannon, Autotomize. Very good win con in this matchup. Probably our main win con in this matchup. Does absolutely amazing if we find that opportunity and get prior chip on the rest of the team. It can kind of just clean. Uh, and then we have a Colber Berry Slowbro with Scald, Ice Beam, Toxic, Slack Off. In hindsight, stupid set because I'm Colber, so I can pivot into Conk, but then I can't actually kill Conk. So what the hell is the point? Really dumb, should be Psychic. I did probably one of my biggest pet peeves in draft is when people run lures. That don't actually lure the Pokemon. So very dumb by me, but it happens. Then we have a life orb for attacks, uh Weavile, Knockoff, Ice Shard, Pursuit, and Ice School Crash. Uh, we are adamant. We do a lot of damage to everything. We trap a Victini as soon as it goes for V Create, we can trap it and you know be able to knock it out unless it's Colbert. And if it's Colbert, we get enough chip to where Zam can win. So Weavile plus Zam are gonna do their thing and uh, you know, really working together well. And then we have a pretty physically defensive Aromatisse, Moonblast, Wish Protect, and Aromatherapy. Uh, very good in this matchup. I'm going to lead off with my Slowbro just because it leads best versus something like a Victini. Uh, and Victini is very annoying for my team to deal with and switch into. Honestly, my team just does not switch into Victini in the slightest. So I need to kind of uh, find an opportunity to stop that thing early on. As Ant is unfortunately going to leave with the Zero Aura. And this is the last thing that I wanted to see. The absolute last thing that I wanted to see is I am going to make an immediate pivot out into, uh, into my Shaman because I don't have another pivot into this monster. Um, it's absolutely terrifying as he is actually gonna go for a bulk up. And that is also awful. Equally as bad for sure, as I believe he is going to uh, just go for a Plasma Fist here. I believe Ant actually expected me to scout for a Z move here. Um, the only issue is I don't really have the opportunity to scout for a Z move in this specific instance. I, I realistically don't. I kind of have to stay in go for an earth power and then try and revenge it with a zam i can try and potentially barrier up on it because i don't think it'll be able to it ko me i trace its plasma fist and then knock off one out to it ko me from there uh, which is another cool thing about zam and, uh, and trace shenanigans and all that stuff as he is gonna go for the z this time and i believe he's actually flying him z bounce and the reason he has flying him z bounce instead as well is because it also hit combo oh. if you don't know zero or it gets play rough in gen 7 and uh, gen 8 but it does not get play rough in gen 7 best way to hit me would have been dual drop outrage or like this bounce and bounce covered both so he was supersonic sky strike to uh, be able to hit shaman 
and uh, Kamo in one fell swoop. He's going to go ahead and go for a Flight MZ. Nuke Big Shaman. So unfortunately, not a very uh, stellar performance for our, for our boy Shaman, which sucks because it was really good in this game. So that's a good trade for Ant for sure. But now I get to go out into my Zam and I just get to click a button here. Uh, no use and obviously not clicking said button. I believe I am going to actually go for a barrier really early on just because, again, I know this thing can't two akio me with knockoff. If I'm at plus two defense, he's at plus one attack um, and he can't plasma fish me and I can kind of deal with him from there, uh, which obviously is really nice. Um, so I am going to go into my Zam. I actually trace the Drapion's battle armor, which is absolutely amazing um, in case he starts getting like knockoff crits and stuff like that as we uh, start barriering up and stuff like that. So I am going to go for a Gleam. It should chunk a non-assault vest uh, Drapion. We're going to see. That's for sure assault vest. It's a very, very bulky Drapion, very, like, almost max for death bulky Drapion. Is he's gonna go for a poison jab and get a first turn poison, which is definitely unfortunate as we're gonna get into a little bit of a longer, uh, you know, kind of cheesy scenario right here. As I'm gonna barrier again, uh, just because I know this thing can't do any damage to me at this point. And I know it's Assault Vest, so it can't roar me out, anything like that. Knockoff's gonna do a decent amount, but again, I have the recover, I'll be able to, you know, recover on up and stuff like that. Though, me showing this recover shows him that I don't have a way of hitting Victini, which is, uh, you know, obviously very good information for, uh, for Ant to have in this specific instance. So I am going to be able to take this knockoff yet again, uh, slowly start to kind of get chipped down. He is going to withdraw here because he sees that he's losing this 1v1, like, pretty easily. He's going to go into the Zero Aura, essentially sack it off. I believe I do recover here, so I'm going to get back up to essentially full. When I knock out the Zero or it'll be at um, two turns of Poison Chip opposed to, you know, very low. So that's obviously great. Um, and we won't be revenged by a Scar 15 automatically, which is awesome. So I am going to just go ahead and Psychic. We take out the Zero Aura, and uh, we're able to draw First Blood. And taking out Zero Aura was absolutely amazing, because that thing for sure could have still won versus us in the end. Uh, we're going to take a little bit of Poison Chip, which is unfortunate. Out comes a Victini. I believe Kurt Jen, this team for Ant, so he named all of the Pokemon different forms of hacks that they can do. I'm going to recover in case he's like, you know, Banded V Creator or something like that. I want to scout and see what he clicks, because he's actually going to click Flame Charge. And I believe he shows Life Orb right here. In my head, I'm like, oh, shit. Um, that's not good, because he set that up knowing willingly that I'd set up barriers. So that tells me he's for sure special. Um, he's gonna go for a blue flare here, and it's going to absolutely nuke our Zam. Not crit, no, we traced the battle armor, we could not be crit. Absolutely nuke our Zam, we did not have really any spadef at all, we had a lot of fizz def investment, and that's incredibly unfortunate. We're gonna go into slow bro, and it's gonna go for a raw thunder. Click it, do about 99, 95% to our slow bro. Get an absolute shit ton of damage off. I'm gonna go for a Scald, be able to bring this thing down pretty low into a range of, uh, you know, two more life orb hits in all honesty. I don't know how the Slowbro survived that. I think it was very much so in my favor, but I think that's absolutely crazy because I had literally zero spin F investment. We are max HP, max defense. Um, as he is gonna go for a Psy Shock here, we're gonna see because I'm physically defensive floor just, it actually does not to it KO me, which is awesome. And then I'm uh, gonna be able to uh, kind of go from there afterwards, I believe. I just go for a protect. Yeah, I want to get as much lefties as back as humanly possible in case that blue flare is able to uh, pick me off. Because again, we're physically offensive. We're not super deaf. Um, definitely a little bit unprepared for special teeny here as I'm going to get a little bit of lefties back. Get back up to 124. And then he's going to go for a thunder right here. I don't know if he's going for the parry. Expect a slow bro pivot. Uh, there's no way I could risk slow bro though. I thought slow bro was way too good. As he's going to actually get a crit thunder as I throw up a wish here because I knew he died to life orb at this point and there's no reason for me to uh, you know do anything else at this point. So we're going to go ahead and wish on up um, and we're going to get a little bit of left use residual back as well at the same time which is awesome. Out comes poison the drapion. Now I know this thing's assault vest so this is honestly a fine turn for me because I can pretty uh, draw back free click protect uh, kind of get back my health. Uh, get back a little bit of lefties plus my wish and then be able to go from there I don't have to worry about this thing sword dancing or setting up a t-spike or anything like that um, And I can be in a pretty good spot as we're gonna get back up to it looks like 160 HP I was gonna say like 150 something, but 160 HP, which is awesome Gonna pivot out here because my floor is still very good in this end game gonna go into my Robert Panda the Weavile I know that I'm gonna take a shit ton from this uh, from this poison jab, which is definitely unfortunate but I'd rather trade this damage um, to get a big icicle crash on something. Unfortunately, he's gonna poison me like ASAP, and that's that's not good. 
that's not fun. Um, but again, I don't need Weavile for a long period of time. I'm just gonna go for a crash because if I can go for a crash, I can chip this thing and then I could potentially win with my Kamo afterwards and be in a good spot. So crash is gonna pop. We're gonna lose some of our HP. He's gonna poison jump again and he's gonna be able to which is a bit unfortunate, but again, uh, the poison didn't really matter because since I would have been too KO'd because of life warp anyways. So it, it realistically just did not matter. He stayed in to get the ship. So pretty good stuff. I'm gonna go into Kamo here. I know this thing can't really touch me very hard. Uh, I'm going to go for an Autotomize. I wish I was Dragon Dance in this instance because I believe he actually ends up going for a knockoff. And that would have been awesome to DD up. We're going to Autotomize though, which means we're faster than everything at this point. I am just going to go for a Clinging Scales. Be able to take out this uh, Drapion, which is awesome. Uh, even if it was, you know, Super Death, all that stuff, we could still Clinging Scales, knock it out. And at minus one, as long as he didn't poison me, I poisoned me. I wasn't too upset with taking a, uh, taking a Poison Jab at that point. Out comes this Jellicent. I'm going to pop my Z on it because it's another Pokemon. If I can get rid of this thing, I can also potentially win with things like Florges and um, Slowbro in the back, which is obviously amazing. And, uh, you know, this is kind of Kamoa's time to shine and, uh, you know, really break through. So Z Kamoa is going to pop once again. We're going to see big cool animation. Boom. Out comes the Dragonium Z. And we're going to be able to uh, bring this thing down incredibly low. I talked to Ann after the game. He's actually a choice scarfed Jellicent. He's gonna go for an Ice Beam um, and not KO us, which is also absolutely amazing. Now, I wanna go for a Flash Cannon here, but if he was a bulky uh, Jellicent, which I didn't know that he was Scarf, no offensive, um, I guess I could've calc in game, but I didn't wanna risk Flash Cannon not killing. I'm gonna go for Clang Skills, and realistically, maybe we can sweep at this point, but because we did two, like uh, Clang Skills twice, we are in range of Conkeldur Mock Punch. Um, so that's unfortunately not going out uh, just because we're minus two defense but Kamoa put in a ton of work and was able to really break through we're gonna see the uh the flame war pop i'm gonna go into my brody and this is a really dumb play so in my head ant has Kelder and he has uh mega sharpedo so if i can just kill this Kelder then my floor just can win the game. I don't think I can Oko some Conkelder variants from full, so I want to get a little bit of chip with my Slowbro. I was Clover. I live this role most of the time, and worst comes to worst, I die and it takes another turn of burn, and then I go for the Moonblast from there. Or I can go for Protect into a Moonblast from there, or something like that. Um, for some reason, you're going to see me right here. Can I can I click forward? Um, he's going to click Knock Off. I am actually going to live due to my Colder Bear, which is awesome. So there's a bunch of dumb things about this place. One, I was Colder Bear without a way to actually hit the stupid um the stupid thing and then also i slacked off instead of just clicking skull the whole reason i came in is because i needed damage to secure a ko potentially um uh, with my floor just because i again i don't care about diff at this point i need to win um as he's gonna knock off again i believe i do live this one as well and this turn i'm gonna think i'm like well, why the hell am i slacking off i'm just gonna scald so i just click scald i get off the damage that i need he's gonna take another turn of burn so all i really gained from this was another extra turn of burn um that, that's realistically all i gained from this Conkelder uh slow bro interaction pretty dumb on my end it was really late when we were playing don't laugh at me too hard super dumb play super super dumb play but now from here i should be able to win my floor just because i am creeping an adamant Conkelder. um Am I creeping an Adamant Conkelder or a Jolly one? Just in case. I might even be creeping Jolly just in case Ant wanted to get cheeky and catch me. Um, but I am going to be able to Moonblast. I know I speed this thing. I'm going to be able to uh, outspeed it and kill it. And now out comes Mega Sharpedo. And even if it is Adamant Poison Jab, it does not kill me from the range of which it is at. It would have to Waterfall flinch me. Um, and even then, Waterfall is into a KMA. So we have to like, either Waterfall turn to twice or Waterfall into Poison Jab. Um, so realistically, unless we get super unlucky, as this thing's name is Flinch, so maybe we should win the game. We also had a range of a Poison Jab crit, which is something that's also very nice. Uh, but we're going to see. We are going to go for Protect. I want to get back as much Lessies as I can. And I know this thing has no form of setup in which it can threaten me. So we're going to see it go for Liquidation, and that's absolutely amazing. That means we essentially seal the game. Crit Liquidation will also not kill us, and uh, we'll be able to knock this thing out with the Moonblast for sure. No way in hell this thing lives because it's a Mega Sharpedo. Uh, not, not very bulky Pokemon. So Liquidation is going to pop. It actually doesn't even do it KOs, which is pretty crazy. Then we're going to be able to Moonblast and uh, take off the Sharpedo and snag a nice 1-0 dub against M Ant. Uh, definitely some sloppy play by me in this game, but we were able to clutch it up and pull it out. Move ourselves to, I believe, uh, I believe it was 5-3 and three at this point. The week after this is when we were supposed to live. Liv had to forfeit just because she was a little busy going on, uh, you know, had a busy stuff going on in life. And then uh, then we're going to jump into week 10 where we played John Jr. So I'll be right back with week 10. 
Alrighty, so for week nine, or no, week ten, we ended up playing my good buddy John Jr. Let me switch sides really quick. Uh, in a potential playoff rematch. Now, John actually didn't end up making playoffs just due to uh, differential and not, no, not differential because he had crazy diff, but just like record, they really keeping him out and stuff like that. So uh, there was still a very, very real possibility of us meeting in playoffs. And I didn't want to bring my best team and really reveal much, but being that I'm recording this late, I don't really have to hold back on what I brought. So I'll definitely be dropping this team in the description below too. But I want to give you the idea that um, this wasn't my A team in the sense that I was confirmed playoffs at this point because I had six wins. When I beat Ant, um, yeah, when I when I beat, uh, no, when I got the forfeit win versus Liv, it confirmed me in for playoffs. So I wanted to win to have a better seed, but I also didn't want to reveal everything. Um, so only one set would I consider my best set in the matchup, and that's gonna be the win column, which is gonna be your Zam. But we'll get to that. Um, other than that, we'll quickly run over the team. John has some scary stuff. He has Greninja, Megalopony, Kieran Black, Skarmory, Gardevoir, and uh, Raichu. I know he also had threats like Breloom, uh, which I was really really scared about, and a bunch of other stuff as well. Uh, first member on our team, though, that I end up bringing, I have a uh, Choice Scarf Nihilego with Power Gem, Sludge Wave, Thunderbolt, and Hidden Power Ice. He also had a Landers uh, Incarnate Sand Force as well, which showed he had HP Ice. Um, he really doesn't deal with Scarf Nihi very well at all. Um, it realistically can super win this endgame. If I get rid of the Lopany, Scarf Power Gem can rip through him depending on his Scarf first, which is nice. Um, the Zam set, like I said, I think it's our best set in the matchup. We are Psy Shock, Charge Beam, Protect, and Shadow Ball. This is going to be my win con. Charge me because his two psychic resist, um, his immunity and his resist, uh, take a shit ton from charge beam and I can start boosting up. Shadow Ball's for the Guard of War and then Psy Shock hits literally everything else. Protect is for Lopity Fake Out. Um, if he's not Fake Out in a quick attack, then he will not be able to revenge me if I'm low. Um, and if I'm healthy, he won't be able to revenge me very easily and I'll be able to hit KOs like crazy, which is awesome. So that's gonna be Zam. I do think that's our best set and our best win con, uh, but I really wanted to bring it because I wanted Zam to do good. Um, then we have a defensive Kamo oh, with leftovers, bulletproof his abilities, Dragon Ball Stealth Rock, Plant Thrower, and Toxic. Just an annoying fat favorite set. This was actually our Breloom check. Um, it checked Breloom pretty well, actually. We also checked things like Skarmory pretty well, which is pretty funny. Uh, hits kind of bounce off of us. Uh, we checked Raichu, we checked Greninja in this matchup, so that's going to be its main goal. Um, then we have a pretty physically defensive Helmet Slowbro with Skull Psychic, Toxic, and Slack Off um, with the Rocky Helmet as its item, obviously for things like Glop, which is really, really nice. Then we have a Rotom Fan uh, with Volt Switch, Air Slash, Toxic, and Defog. Don't want to get st uh, stacked. I don't want to be sub fodder for Kyurem as well. I want to catch Toxic for just to come in on me. Another good Lop check, another decent Grim check. Just a nice overall pivot in this matchup and a way to keep hazards off our field. And then we have a Calm Mind Flourish with Moonblush, Wish, and Protect as well. Um, physically defensive. Here to kind of pivot into Kyurem, pivot into Lop a little bit as well, and then uh, check that Grenade check, which is very scary versus, as you saw in week two. We played a lot of Pokemon that Slick had on this team. We played slick a while back um on other teams and they're all the ones that ripped us so not fun but let's go ahead and jump into it um i believe i am just gonna lead off my kamo i'm gonna get a brox as early as possible i can also check the law beneath that wants to leave this after black so it can't really do it kill me um as raichu leaves i can pretty easily get up my stealth rock right here as i get back my lefties out comes guard i'm gonna pivot on the floor just definitely my best check to it as it actually goes for a thunder wave and that's not fun I'm gonna make a double into my Rotom, expecting a potential uh, Skarm pivot right there. I want to grab momentum on it, get a Volt Switch off, and then really start going to town on the rest of this team. But he actually ends up going for a Taunt. Not the biggest deal in the world though, because I should outspeed this uh, this guard. I'll be able to Volt Switch, go back out into my floor just as he goes for a Moonblast. I believe gets a special attack drop, which is uh, no bueno, but um, definitely not the biggest deal in the world. As Skarm comes out this time, so he got me. I'm gonna go into Nihi this time, however. I want to be able to go for a power gem as this thing goes for its rocks. It didn't kill me with Iron Head, and I want to try to KO it, get it low for my Zam to win. As now he's going to pivot out to Raichu, um, sack that thing off as I am choice scarfed. He goes out into Greninja as well. I'm going to be able to click power gem. Unfortunately, not going to get the roll to kill it. I don't know if it was roll. And then he's going to get a torrent surf off. This was actually a roll as well. I think in my favorite, I don't remember particularly, but he's going to be able to knock me out. And uh, I'm going to go into my Zam because in my head, I'm thinking, okay, I charge beam and I win. Right? I should be able to charge beam and I win. Uh, we're going to go into it. I'm accidentally not uh, Magic Guard because I forgot to change it before the game. This is a Wi-Fi recreation, by the way, because we dc like right at this turn. Uh, but I'm going to go for a charge beam because he actually ends up being faster than me. And this is because he was Scarf Gren. He just really underprepared for Scarf me. He told me he didn't think it would come. He was actually Scarf Raichu as well. Um, but he didn't expect for either of them to come. Uh, I mean, either of them to get outspent by Nihi because he didn't think that Scarf Nihi was going to come. So unfortunately, I kind of get boned right there because I didn't use Scarf. Uh, but I'm going to be able to get off a of Charge Beam. 
thankfully get the special attack boost. And um, if this lop is quick attack, I don't win the Zam, which is unfortunate, but I can still win the game in general. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and protect as he does fake out. And uh, we're gonna see right here, he pivots out, which means he does not have quick attack, which means in theory, we should win this game. So I'm gonna go for a Psy Shock right here, knock out this Skarmory. Out comes Gardevoir, him kind of hoping I don't have Shadow Ball, but I do knock him out with a plus one Shadow Ball at this point in time. I know he's not like Assault Vest or anything weird or Scarf. We're going to be able to knock it out. Out comes Kieran Black, and this is a potential roll depending on his bulk. Um, I am just going to click Psy Shock though. It's my best play for sure. We're going to be able to knock out Kieran, and then out comes Lopany, and we're going to be able to protect and, uh, you know, be able to, you know, avoid this fake out and then Psy Shock. So Zam finally putting in the utmost and getting the sweep that we've been trying to get with it up to this point. Uh, but it's going to get on showdown, which is unfortunate, but not the biggest in the world. Uh, like I said, this is the last week of regular season. Uh, we end up beating John here, moving us to 7-3. and three, I believe we became the second seed in the league, which means we put the seventh seed, which is actually our good buddy, Diet Tight or Jason, the last dude we played as an upload on this channel. And uh, yeah, we're going to have to go ahead and jump into that one and show you our round one game as well. So round one arrives and we are playing my good buddy Jason. Jason was actually the last game that we actually uploaded um, of PMU before we took a little bit of a hiatus in that upload. So uh, we're actually bringing a very similar team that we brought in that matchup. So if you want to go back and look back at that team builder, we're bringing the same exact team minus we took off Forges for a Shaman. I believe we are a, uh, a pretty spadef Shaman. Uh, more so Max HP with a little bit of spadef. I, I realized I was really weak to sub lead Seed Superior. He wanted to bring that this time. And I wanted a way of potentially dealing with that thing. So I went with like a, it was Giga Drain, Earth Power, Leech, uh, Air Slash, and Synthesis. Air, Giga Drain over Seed Flare, because I didn't want to actually give the Superior Spit a boost. And then lose to it 1v1. Um, so we are, uh, you know, Giga Drain instead. And also let's be getting back a little bit of residual and stuff like that. We see the Superior didn't come, so it's definitely our least useful member. But um, definitely something to keep uh, in the back of our minds at the very least. Other than that, same exact team. Choice Band, Weavile, Physically Defensive, Rocky Helmet, uh, Slowbro with Foul Play, Toxic, Slack Off, Scald, Poisonium Z, um, Close Combat, Poison Jab, Stealth Rock, Dragon Dance, Come oh, oh. Assault Vest, Nihilego, and then a Barrier, Hidden Power, Round Psychic, and Recover Mega Alakazam, which is going to serve as our main win con in this matchup. Let's go ahead and jump into it. I am going to lead off with my Nihilego just because I lead. Uh, I don't want to lead against that Porygon Z. Last time I had Hidden Power Ground, it caught me off guard because I forgot Hidden Power was a thing, even though I'm running in a you know, on my Pokemon, and I didn't want to, uh, you know, potentially have to switch into that, because uh, a turn one prediction on that Hidden Power Ground, which I know Jason would do, put me in a really bad spot early, and nothing on my team really lead well versus a, uh, versus a Porygon Z, potentially, so I want no potential way of, you know, dealing with that and being able to do with that, so he's going to lead Jirachi, no reason for me to stay in, I'm going to pivot right into my slow bro, he's going to go for an Iron Head, uh, he's going to get chipped by Rocky Helmet again. He could be the same exact set. Um, he could honestly be the same exact team because he brought the same exact six as last time. But he's going to take a little bit of Rocky Helmet chip. And this is absolutely amazing. I'm going to go for a Toxic. In hindsight, maybe a uh, a Scald was my better play because nothing really appreciates switching in on Scald. I wanted to Toxic the uh, Clefable though if that end up wanting to come in to scout and see its uh, ability. Um, I am just going to go for a Scald here. I know I live a Dark Pulse. I know I live a Crunch. I know I live all that good stuff. So I want to kind of just gauge damage potentially get a burn on this thing which we do which is awesome and we're going to be able to use slow road to the best of its abilities and kind of pivot out and get our regen back which is amazing um i'm going to go into come oh, but jason makes a good double and goes out and do his jirachi uh, realizing that i can't really do much to this thing uh with my come oh, oh, at this point in time in the game and uh he could obviously carry fairy coverage for me in either dazzling gleam or moon blast he would have to be dazzling gleam because this jirachi is not shiny and it has to be shiny jirachi to uh carry moon blast in seven so something to keep in mind but regardless, I'm going to switch out and scout for it. I also could, you know, just take a big Zen headbutt to the face. And there's no point because I don't kill with close combat. So he's going to go for a Dazzling Claim. Completely fine with me. I believe I just go for a uh, a big Scald at this point. Because um, I'm going to be able to really chip down this Scum Tank, which is definitely a big nuisance to my team. Scald's going to pop. We're going to do a big chunk of damage. It's going to... Well, not a big chunk, but that in conjunction with Burn is going to be absolutely amazing. It's going to be almost, what, around 55-ish percent at this point, which is absolutely amazing. We're going to pivot out into Kamo'o. Oh, Jason makes another good play, being as aggressive as he always plays. Goes for a player off. This shouldn't to it KO me, though, so I wasn't too worried. Um, but he gets a crit. And this is unfortunate, because I'm put in a position right here where um, I need my rocks in this game. I'm playing Zardex with no removal. I need my rocks in this game. It also lets me scout and see the Clefable's uh, ability, things like that. Um, I think rocks are more important than KOing the Skuntick at this point in time. So I am going to go for a Stealth Rock. I would have loved to kept my Kamo'o as a sack, potentially. 
or a way to, uh, you know, kill this, uh, kill this, uh, what do you call it, Skuntank, or drop a big poison in Z on the Clefable at some point. But, uh, unfortunately, the crit's gonna kind of take that opportunity away from us. He is gonna go for a player of here, knock us out, because crit into a regular player did knock us out. So, a little bit unfortunate there, but we get up our rocks, this thing is burnt, and we're in a pretty good position, as I'm gonna go out into Hobbert Randa himself, and I'm just gonna click Icicle Crash. Um, there aren't any good Icicle Crash resists on this team. It's realistically only Jirachi, and Jirachi takes that plus rocks, and then has to potentially take some Rocky Helmet Chip, and it's just not in a good spot. So the rocks were really important in this specific instance, in my personal opinion. And uh, yeah, we're gonna be in a good spot. As Clefable's gonna come out, you're gonna see you do the rocks. He is, again, unaware, which is obviously amazing um, information for us to know. As I believe I am just gonna pivot out into my slow bro. I'm healthy enough to wear Moomblash should not to it kill me. Uh, if he wants to get up his rocks or knock off or anything like that, not that big of a deal. As uh, he is gonna get up his rocks, I'm gonna throw off a Toxic here because again, I wanna wear this thing down and I don't have great means of switching hard into Clefable if it does have like Psy Shock or something like that for my Nihi. I need my Nihi very healthy. So uh, definitely very scary. He is gonna go for a Moonblast here. He's gonna do a decent chunk, won't lie to you. It gets a special attack drop as well, which is a little bit annoying, but not the biggest deal in the world. Uh, but we're able to get off a big Toxic. And right here, I'm thinking, ah, I might as well slack off, get back a little bit of health, and you know, kind of go from there. As uh, he's gonna, his leftovers are gonna pop, and these are just long interactions, because they're all Gen 7 Wi-Fi animations. And I can't speed them up or anything like that. In my Regardless, he's going to take a little bit of poison. And then he's going to go for a Thunderbolt. So he deked the hell out of me. Uh, went for the Moonblast to get me feeling a little comfortable to where I can just, you know, slack off damage. And that was a little too close for comfort. I'm going to be able to slack off, um, get back a good majority of my health back. But um, definitely scary. Definitely scary to say the least. So I don't really want to mess around with this um, at all, in all honesty. I can regen back all of my health from here and uh, be in a good spot. It doesn't look like, it looks like it's a potential roll to it kill me and I'm also risking pairs and things like that. So I believe I do pivot out into um, into my Nihilego right here. Can you pivot Nihi? No, I pivot into, okay, so I pivot Shaman because Shaman was my least useful member. Kind of wishing I pivoted Nihi because it would have looked like an absolute god there. And I've been in a really good spot, but um, out comes this Vikavolt, and this sucks because this is going to allow Jason some pretty free momentum. Now, Vikavolt doesn't get webs in Gen 7, which is another thing to keep in mind. Uh, we don't have to worry about it getting up webs on us, which is really, really nice. I'm going to go Nihi. I don't have switches to Bug Buzz, otherwise my Kamo'o is dead. Which is another reason why Kamo'o being around night would have been nice, because I could have used this as a sack later on. This thing, I'm going to Volt Switch, do a ton, even though we're AV, and uh, get on out of there. However, being that it took another turn of um, Stealth Rock, if he's the same switch as last time, he should die to our, what do you call it, in the back, which is really, really, really good. So, Jirachi comes out, I'm gonna pivot out. Even if it's not Scarf, I don't think I knock it out with a foul play. I do think it's Scarf at this point though, so I'm uh, gonna have to be careful. As I go out into my Slowbro, he's gonna go for a, a U-turn, which is completely fine, um, because he's gonna start, again, taking that Rocky Helmet chip plus rocks. And while it is a steel type, the rocks shouldn't be that big of a deal. Uh, it's that in conjunction with the Rocky Helmet that's really helping us out here. As Porygon's gonna come out, it's gonna take rocks, and oh man, where are my switchings? Um, I'm going to pivot right out into Nihi, I believe. I, or no, I go out into uh, Shaman because Shaman should be able to outspeed this thing. I should also be able to live a hit from full. It's my least useful member. I don't want to go hard into uh, Hidden Power Ground on my Nihi. I wanted to potentially scout for it as he is going to do an absolute shitload of damage to us with that tri attack. Probably a good 80%, um, which is pretty nuts. But I'm going to be able to uh, throw off a pretty free Giga Drain and just chip something coming in. Um, if it's Jirachi, that's completely fine. Because again, this chip is adding up to where I can even set up an Ice Shard endgame with my uh, Weavile. Or even an Ice School Crash endgame with my Weavile um, if I get rid of this thing. So we're going to get back a little bit of health. And that in conjunction with my lefty is actually potentially pushing it out of range of a U-turn. I don't think he has the liberty of potentially going for an Iron Head here. And if he does, I get a free switch anyway. So it's not that big of a deal in all honesty. So I'm going to stay and try and synth up. Um, unfortunately, he does get the roll. It was pretty severely in my... Uh, no, it was in his favor, I think. I think it was like a 60% chance to knock out or something close to it. Like 50-60%. Uh, so unfortunately, we don't get the roll. But again, not that big of a deal. I talked about uh, Shaman kind of being my least valuable member at this point in the game. So I didn't really need it. As Clefable's going to come in, it's going to take rocks, get lefties, and then take poison. So again, we're slowly chipping away at this big, fat, pink blob. It really fits into the, the beautiful hearts background that we have, which I really like, actually. I'm going to go with Nihi, and this is going to be an instance of um, two friends playing against each other. If you remember the game last time, uh, there was a play in which I was in with my Nihi on something, and I clicked foul play expecting Jason to switch. I think it was Porygon Z, and he did not. I expected him to switch to the Jirachi. And then the next turn, I was like, well, fine, if you want to give me this, 
I'll do it, and then I'll just, I click Sludge Whiff, and then it's Jason Specific told me I made the play because I knew he wouldn't do it again. Um, so it's just, you know, dumb things like that when you're playing against friends. And in my head, I'm thinking, he's going Rashi. He's going to try and get me. I don't think he wants to give me this because if I'm speed boosting, I can just win the game with Nihi right here. I'm going to foul play. He's going to stay in, but he reveals Thunderbolt. Uh, well, no, we know his last move is Thunderbolt. His last attack is Thunderbolt because he needs some way to recover. Probably Moonlight because he can't be soft boiled because he's, um, He's unaware. So he's going to take a little bit more poison. And this turn, again, I'm like, he's going into it. I can foul play. He doesn't go into it again. And I'm like, damn, I should have just clicked fucking um, Sludge Wave. Whatever. It's fine. It's fine. It's not that big of a deal. Now I'm down to 61. It's doing about 20 points of damage each time it clicks it against me. So it's not doing that much in all honesty. And again, the third time. And he told me after the game, he was really close to going into Jirachi on this play. Um... As a joke, I'm going to click Power Gem instead of Sludge Wave because I'm like, at least I'll get Chip on it coming in. Nope, he's going to go for Moonlight, which is completely fine. Again, I expected him to do something of the sorts. But again, I don't think he can really give me this Pokemon because if I am speed boosting, I raw win. I kill the Porygon because it's not very bulky, most likely. Uh, I kill the Zard, and then I kill the Vikavolt, and then uh, Rashi dies to Foul Play in the range of that. So I'm going to go for a Power Gem again. Uh, unfortunately, we're not going to get the roll, which is unfortunate. It was a roll to potentially kill him, depending on his spread. Uh, but he's going to go for Thunderbolt again. This is completely fine, in all honesty, uh, because I'm going to be able to come in on rocks again, uh, which is the main reason I kind of still wanted me here around. And uh, down goes to Clefable, at the very least. So we're not going to get a Beast Boost, um, but we don't reveal on what our Beast Boost is yet, at the very least, which is awesome. And we do force in this Rashi, because nothing else on the team outspeeds. Point too. So, uh, Nihi can very viably still win the game later if we get enough chip on the rest of the team. So, I am gonna go into big broadsters. Um, gonna take a little bit of rock chip as it does go for an iron head. Again, this is absolutely amazing. Um, this basically means that it can attack me one more time, <laughs> and that's about it, which is awesome. My ice shard endgame is very, very much so a possibility at this point as well. So, uh, that's really good. Um, Vikavolt's gonna come in, it's gonna take a little bit of chip, I believe I just go for a Scald, because there's no reason for me to not go for a Scald. And now I'm in a tough spot, because, um, can't let Slowbro go down, is very important for an endgame Zard, uh, Zard X, that is. Slowbro is very important for an endgame Zard. So, I need to pivot out, I need to go into my Nihi, if he goes for a Roost, I'll be able to, again, potentially win, because I just click Power Gem and I claim a KO. Um, if he goes Narachi, then the game's over. Uh, but he's just going to go for a buzz, Bug Buzz, realizing that he can't get in for free. But at the same time, I didn't need Nihi to win. Um, I think Nihi was probably my least expendable, or most expendable member at that point. So we are going to go hard into it. It is unfortunately going to drop. But this gives me my free switch in to Mega Alakazam. And now it's time for Mega Alakazam to do Mega Alakazam things and just click Psychic um, and Prosper. There's no way this thing lives a Psychic from this range. Absolutely no way um, it lives a Psychic from this range. So we're going to be able to Mega up get that cool animation going uh we actually again also blend in very well with this background levitate's gonna be traced not that it really matters don't think he has a ground type on his uh on his team that he brought here or really any earthquake coverage at all <laughs> i'm gonna be able to psychic knock out the bike of out comes zard because of rocks it is for sure in range max hp um took like 55 min you have to be like super spread f zard x to live this hit uh, and then he might not kill us because we're like physically defensive Zam. Um, or at least we're 228 bold. So I am just going to go for a Psychic, be able to pick off this Zard. And uh, again, be in a really good spot in this endgame potentially. All that's left is going to be uh, Jirachi, which can come in. But again, it gets off one more attack and it dies to Helmet. So not that big of a deal if it does end up living. I'm going to switch out just in an attempt to, you know, play as optimally as humanly possible. Um, I am going to go into my slow bro. He is going to go for a iron head, I believe. Yep. Iron head. Um, and then I believe he is just going to, uh, die to Rocky helmet. Yeah. So slow bro putting in the utmost of work in this playoff game. Uh, bulky psychics have just kind of been the theme of this video. I feel, uh, whether it be slow King in game one, uh, mega Alakazam in, uh, game two or, or slow bro as well, a little bit in game two. And then in game three, Mega Alakazam sweeping and then Rowan Zam going crazy in this game as well. So out comes the Porygon Z, last one. I just clicked Scald because I need to chip this thing down into range of a Ice Shard from Weavile, which this is going to be able to do. I clicked Toxic this turn, I believe, just to, um, you know, make sure this thing can't recover an absolute ton on me if it is, like, recover. But if it's recover, it's only tomorrow try attack, which is, um, definitely, definitely pretty interesting. 
Um, but regardless, I'm gonna go into my Robert Panda. I'm just gonna I shirt, and we're gonna be able to uh, pick up this win in round one. And that kind of concludes our PMU mini movie. I'll try and get semifinals up as its own separate entity, and hopefully, if we win that, I'll put finals as its own entity as well. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for um, one being patient with me in my non-uploading ways these last few weeks. Again, it's been a very busy time for me just in general. Uh, but I wanted to get this up to you and stuff, so it's a little bit of a mash of four games together, but I figured you guys would enjoy this. Maybe putting it on in the background while you fall asleep or, you know, uh, while you're studying or something like that as background noise. I, I know I really like watching these, like, movie-type videos, so I figured you guys might enjoy this as well, but... Yeah, with that being said, uh, thank you guys so much for watching again. Drop a like if you enjoyed. Um, sub if you're new. Let me know what else you guys want to see on the channel, any other ideas you have for me. And, uh, yeah, with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.